of May. Uh, a special day if you're a Star Wars fan. May the fourth be with you and all that stuff. Um, uh, it's really great to, to welcome you here on this uh, on this on this day. It's, uh, it's it's wonderful to and privilege as always to be here with you. Um, just um, uh, this evening we're going to have a, a watch party um, with Rowan Williams in discussion with um, Frank Skinner. Um, having Archbishop of Canterbury on our Facebook page seems to be the seems to be the kind of in thing at the moment. Um, but yeah, this evening at half past seven, um, we can watch together. It's it's entertainment and discussion. Uh, and if you'd like to join in um, watching that, that'd be fantastic if you can. Otherwise, just catch up. Um, or you can watch things um, on you. Or you can watch them on YouTube. Um, yeah, I hope you had I hope you had a good weekend. Um, oh, Kate's uh, mum's 94th birthday. Um, it's one of those poignant kind of occasions where the isolation and the, the, the kind of shielding and things that are going on really does hit home and um, it becomes very real, I suppose, that you can't spend um, time together. So happy birthday uh, to your mum, Kate, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to kind of link up in some way today, even if it is just a phone call. Um, but wishing her a very happy birthday and um, uh, and yeah, I hope you're able to cope with the situation as well. So Monday morning, the start of a new week. Ordinarily, this would be a bank holiday, but uh, the bank holiday is actually on Friday. For what it's worth, I'm not quite sure it's going to be quite the day people had envisaged and people had really planned for. Um, but perhaps we might do something on Facebook to, to commemorate um, Friday um, being at the end of the war in Europe. It kind of still went on, didn't it? But um, uh, we can have a look to see what there might be, even if it's a link to something else that is going on. Today is the day we remember English saints and martyrs of the Reformation era. Those people that we read about in history books um, who actually have shaped who we are today and um, shaped the way that we worship, shaped the way that we um, just just how we are and how the church is. I'm really sorry that I put the link to the liturgy on very, very late today. My computer was on a bit of a ghost slow. Monday morning blues, you might say. But let's come together we, as we come together to worship God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin, and alive to God, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ 
shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 103 today, Psalm 103, starts with this refrain. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins? and heals your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as, in, as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful to those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the flower, our days are but as grass. We, we flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is, of, is from of old, who endures forever on those who fear him, and is and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you, all you, his hosts, you ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Merciful Lord. As we can turn to show us the face of our Redeemer, that in our frailty we may bless your name and praise you all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. During this time of Easter, we are using this song of Moses and Miriam as a, a canticle. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is strength and my song and has become my salvation this is my god whom i will praise the god of my forebears whom i will exalt 
The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. We continue with Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 2 verse 41 I said 31 no, it's 41 Luke 2 41 and we continue to hear about the young Jesus now every year Jesus parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover and when he was 12 years old they went up as usual for the festival when the festival was ended and they started to return the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travellers, they went, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be at my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. And they went down with them and they, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart and Jesus increased her wisdom. Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are some very interesting readings in the Bible, which in a modern context, we might read very differently. Uh, fancy leaving a 12 year old uh, in another city and only noticing three days later. It wasn't like that. Of course, the culture and the context were very different in those times. They would have gone in, uh, as it said, with relatives and friends. And 12 may well have been a little bit older than it is today. But Jesus, when we, we kind of think about it, was Jesus perfect? Well, according to his mother, perhaps at that point, she might not have thought he was perfect, but he was doing his father's will and learning about his father's will. Um, interesting how another Passover, some 20 years later, um, maybe a little bit more than that, Jesus again did something in the temple, turned over the tables, which in some eyes would not have been perfect, but actually was still doing the Father's will. So it is seeking the Father's will, is listening to God. That's the important thing. And as it says, in wisdom and in years, and uh, in divine and human favour. It's what we all want to do, really, isn't it? We can at least do one of them. We can grow up in years, but we want to grow up with wisdom and in divine and human favour. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. 
death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Going back uh, just a, a verse or so to, sorry, a verse or so, a chapter or so to the song of Zechariah. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of the right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. But through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the Lord and Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We now come to a time of prayer and intercession. And just for a moment of quiet, we're in a moment of quiet, I should say you might like to lift before God those who are on your hearts, those who are special to you, but you cannot see at the moment. Um, bring those people, uh, a special day for Kate's mum and for Kate today, bring those people, um, lift them up to God in your hearts. Dear Father, we lift before you all those who are on our hearts, those whom we love, those whom you love as well. We pray that it, as, as we are distanced, as we are separated, we pray those bonds of friendship, of love, will be strong. We pray, dear Father, that your protection will be over those whom we love. We pray, dear Father, that you will Yeah, your arms will be around them and that they will know your presence this day. And we pray for a day soon, Lord, when we will be reunited, both with our earthly families and our church family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let us, by prayer and intercession, with thanksgiving, make our requests continue to make our requests to God. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women and children. We give you thanks for all that is gracious in our own lives. For all that you have blessed us with. For all that you have given us, Lord. Help us always to be grateful for those around us and for what we have. Help us today our daily bread. That it will be just that, Lord. That we will be satisfied with what we have. and that everybody will have that daily bread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love and service. We pray for Lee and Viv, our bishops, for Neil and Christopher, our archdeacons, 
and for all who are working towards and ministering your word in uh, in deeds, in actions, and in words at this time. And we pray for the life of our communities, of our parishes, of our diocese, of our nation. We give you immense thanks, Lord, for the gift of your word and the light that it offers us all and the hope that is set before us. We pray and we pray for this nation that it will be open to your word. And we pray, Lord, for those that are starting to pray, for those that are starting just to have a conversation with you. We pray, dear Father, that they will know that you answer prayer. We pray, dear Father, that they will find you and that they will know the hope you have set before us all. We give you thanks for the grace of the sacraments and we give you immense thanks for the fellowship of your people. And we look forward to the day when we are back together worshipping you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local communities. We pray for all people in their daily life and work. For all those that are getting up today and going to work or already at work, that you will give them protection and that they will know and feel your presence. We give you thanks for them, Lord, and whatever they are doing. We give you thanks for our health workers right on the front line, helping those who are ill, and suffering. We pray for the young and the elderly, for families and all who are alone, and we give you thanks for human skill, creativity and care. And indeed we pray for all those who are carers at this time, those in, in homes, those visiting homes and those who are caring for relatives. And we give you thanks for Lord, for all that is going on to reveal your wonder and your loveliness at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need, for the sick, the sorrowful, the anxious, for those who are unwell in body, mind or spirit. We pray, dear Father, that they will feel your presence at this day, that they will know your comfort. We pray for all those who are looking after them, for all those who are worried about them, for all those that are separated from them at this time. And again, Lord, we pray and give you thanks for all who are bringing comfort, care and healing. We give you thanks for human love and friendship and all that enriches our daily lives. And dear Father, this day we pray for those who um, have the, are under the curse of separation. For those, dear Father, that who are mourning the loss of a loved one, we continue to pray for the family of family of Alan Glover. But so also this morning we pray for the family of Penny, uh, sorry, Peggy Baroken. We pray, Lord, that they will know your comfort at this time. And the hope you have set before us all of life with you even after death, of your love that knows no boundaries. So let us commend ourselves this day and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Collect for today. Merciful God, who when your church on earth was torn apart by the ravages of sin, raised up men and women in this land who witnessed to their faith with courage and constancy. Give to your church that peace which is your will and grant that those who have been divided on earth may be reconciled in heaven. 
and share together in the vision of your glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen, uh, may the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And may the Lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for uh, thank you. Uh, it really is uh, really is a privilege to, um, to 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 join with you. I'm just looking through the comments, and um, thank you, and for those that put comments there and have had this geezer of of um, emojis, which is very colourful and wonderful to see. Hopefully you can see it as well. Remember tomorrow, all things being well, nine, nine o'clock, there or thereabouts for morning prayer. And then we have um, a watch party. But you need to go onto the, I'm not quite, I don't know if you access it. I've just gone onto the Facebook page and it comes up and it says, this is happening live and you just click on it and you join in. Um, if you join in and it says St. Margaret's, your kind of icon says St. Margaret's Church, um, just don't click on the play and the pause and all that type of thing, thinking I'll go back to the beginning because it stops every, it stops it for everyone. We're still getting used to these things. Um, and it's quite a long one today. It's, uh, it's actually four videos put all together and they've divided it up. Um, but the joins aren't terribly good. So you... It's not like part one, part two, part three. Um, you need to watch them all. It's entertaining uh, and thought provoking. Uh, it's not the deepest of theology, but it's it's a it's a good fun watch. And even though it's Frank Skinner and Rowan Williams, there's there's no blue language. It's um, uh, it's something you can watch without having a bleep or anything like that. Um, so please do feel free to join. Have a great day and may God bless you and keep you and stay safe and stay well. And um, again, pray for the day that we're all back together. God bless. <laughs>